In today's video, which is going to be another beginner's video, so this is nothing for experts. Um, basically, the I can best summarize the video up with a question. The question is, why would you use DC coupling of an oscilloscope instead of AC coupling when you're feeding in low frequency complex waveforms such as a square wave or a triangle wave into an amplifier. This, this problem had happened to me before. I had um, did some testing and I forgot to put the scope into the DC coupling position when I was feeding in a low frequency square wave and I couldn't figure out why the square wave had shown a tilt. It took me a while to figure it out. The problem was I simply had an oscilloscope switch in the AC position and AC coupling position and not in the DC coupling position. And then, of course, the problem cleared up. Now, if you if you use the AC if you use the AC coupling mode, you always have to think think basically capacitor coupling. Think that you have a capacitor in the input. And with the DC mode, basically, you basically what you do is you cut the capacitor out and it doesn't affect the waveform. So I haven't seen this happen with the sine wave, only with the other two complex waves I use, a square wave and a triangle wave, and it happens at low frequency. I think what happens is that the waveform, basically the waveforms, they're influenced by the capacitor charging and discharging kind of like you get the two intermingled and that causes the distortion but what does happen if say with the if you have it in the AC mode and you're feeding in a low frequency sine wave you're going to get basically attenuation that is the amplitude is going to get smaller that depends upon depends upon your scope and every scope, of course, has a low frequency cutoff point in the AC. I think I can go ahead and show this on the scope too. So let me go ahead and um, get everything set up then. Then I'll go ahead and hold the camera and show the waveforms on the uh, scope. Okay, one thing I do have to mention before I forget. Um, why, for example, wouldn't I use DC coupling all the time? Well, let's say, for example, I am, say, troubleshooting preamp or something like that, or the tone control board. Well, what I, what basically, what I always like to do, I always like to look at the waveform uh, just by itself. And if you have, say, DC coupling activated, what you're going to see, you're going to see the DC voltage and basically the AC voltage. You're going to see the, the waveform both at the same time. And that's not really what I want. I go ahead and I... Um, try to look at the different waveforms and if a waveform's off then I'll go ahead and get my meter out and do troubleshooting with the meter and except that's the way how I do things. So I decided to start out here and show you the AC coupling first. Um, what had happened to me before is that I, again, as I had explained, I had the, the scope in AC coupling. I think right now I am feeding in 15 hertz. It was even higher than that, and I still had the tilt. And I basically it stumped me till I took a closer look at the scope, and there the problem uh, solved itself. Right. So what you're looking at now is the waveform being affected by the uh, charge and discharge of the uh, uh, input coupling capacitor there. Now, I'll go ahead and put the scope now in the DC coupling position. And look at that. The um, square wave is nice and um, square. And um, we'll go ahead now and let's say if we take a look at a um, triangle wave. So we're in the um, basically DC position. And we'll see, it actually uh, looks pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and go back to AC. And right there, that's uh, distortion right there. 
Now let me go ahead and go up to like 30 Hertz. The higher we go up in frequency, the less the distortion is noticeable. So we're at 30 right there. And we've still got some bone. We'll go to the here DC position again. Nice and straight AC. We still got some distortion. Let's go up even higher. Um, go up to well, I'm at 105 Hertz. So now I'm in the AC position, and it about looks. I think about it about looks about right. We'll go ahead and try the square wave. That's a square wave. You can see the square wave is still tilted, and only when we go up more. Let's say we go up to. Say we're going up to right now. I think we're at. 400 hertz is a square wave starting to look a lot, basically a lot better. As far as uh, sine waves are concerned, I'll go ahead and bring this, bring the uh, frequency down, and you'll see that there's really, it will not make a difference. Um, here's the, uh, basically the scope in the AC position. And we'll take it into DC position. As far as the waveform is concerned, you really can't tell the difference. But what you can tell, if you notice this, look at the um, look at the amplitude of the waveform. See here how it's uh, again right here. We look, it's 10 hertz. Um, look how high it is here. And I'll watch when I go to the AC position, and you notice I'm losing some of the amplitude. Uh, it's hard to say how much I might be losing. What well, seems to be around might be around 15, 20 percent around there. I really can't tell exactly. Also, I'm behind the uh, camera, but you can see basically it does make a difference. And here, just for further demonstration, I've got the scope still in the AC position, and now uh, watch the amplitude not the waveform basically the amplitude that full amplitude right there and you can see how much uh, attenuation is right there so these are just two factors that you have to keep in mind uh, as I said this is really a beginner's video it's not for uh, pros or know-it-alls ex experts or something like that uh, but as a beginner you might be prone to making these mistakes as to me I'm not a beginner really but I still uh, occasionally do make mistakes like this. And um, thanks so much for watching.